These investigators who are looking at these five different cold cases are looking at details in a lot of these pictures. So big warning again, when I show you some of these pictures, um, the details within the pictures matter because they may actually lead to the resolution of five cold cases for five families out there. What's also fascinating about the pictures is what Dennis Rader's daughter sees that we don't see. She sees her grandparents' basement, and she sees uh, items of interest that she recognizes, blankets that she slept on while camping. She sees um, places where her family went to church. She recognizes a lot of things. She, she even recognizes items that belong to her father that he's wearing, that she herself um, would, would do in the laundry for him. So it's difficult. Well, I've got the graphic warning up there long enough. I want to show you some of those pictures again. Because there were these pictures not only of him reenacting himself, um, buried like he buried his victims, made up with wigs and makeup bound in chairs, um, lying like this out in the woods somewhere discussed by many of the experts and detectives that he was on scouting trips when he did these things, hoisting himself up in trees like he did to his victims. And then these party pictures in motel rooms. This one in particular, Carrie Rawson uh, is going to discuss with us in a moment because there's a lot in there that she recognizes. That's her grandparents' basement. Um, so what's critical, though, is the details that we now know from pictures we didn't, we didn't really think about, you know, almost 20 years ago. I want to bring in Carrie Rawson right now. She's live to discuss these. Carrie, you've seen a lot more of these pictures than, than we have. You've seen a lot, a lot of pictures uh, that the public has never seen. What haven't we seen? Can you describe for me what you've seen that we haven't? Oh, um, good evening, Ashley. Um, this is probably only about a handful of pictures. Um, when I uh, flew into Osage, uh, they started showing me all of my dad's records. Uh, there's probably about 200 bondage photos that my dad's taken. Um, it's really important first to note, to note that they're taken by my father. They're Polaroids. Uh, he uses a cord. He came up with a system. He carried this stuff around. He did these at hotels. He did these in churches that he broke into. He did them in our church. He did them in my home when we were gone. Um, he actually did one in my um, college dorm room when I was out shopping with my mom in August of uh, 98. You can match what he's doing with um, his journals. Um, he's digging. So what we what the public is not seeing is, is evidence right now in these cases because he's reenacting actual crime scenes. And we're trying to match up now um, missing persons and um, murdered with possibly these photos. And He's wearing victim's clothing in some of these, and you can match them with timeline. And so we're seeing, like in Garber's case, uh, she, we believe, was murdered or at least dumped on Halloween in 1990. A few days later, he goes and does a big bondage in a church in um, West Wichita. Um, and we believe, based on his bondage choices in that photo, that he's a series, too, where he's reenacting several things that happened to a victim, and he's wearing bindings that match Garber, and then there, and then there's a blanket that's missing from Garber, and we think it was under Dad on that bondage, and he literally had that blanket in our house, and then he took it camping, and he literally covered me with that blanket when I when I was cold. Um, it's hard to even believe that that you're having to relive this, and and I think public should know that. They should be thankful that you're doing this with law enforcement to help them and inform them of what you know and, and give the information that you know. Let me go through some of the photos specifically. I want to start with the first one. I'll ask our control room if they can just put up the photo that's called the sand photo um, because I want to ask you about what you know regarding the location of this photo. Well, first I know that shovel, that was our camping shovel that we, we used like for fires. I believe that's out at Lake Cheney. Um, he would take his camping on a sandbar. He didn't like to camp around people, and I didn't understand why, because as a little girl, you know, you want the public restroom and stuff. My mom didn't ever camp, so it was me and my older brother, and we would go to bed, and he would do this bondage, and that's a sandbar out at Cheney, I'm sure. Now, one of the questions about that one is we don't have any confirmed cases of my father burying anybody. Why is he reenacting a burial? It's very concerning because we have some women that we think have been buried. Uh, Project Prairie Hayes. 1983, we're looking at her as a burial. He talks about burials with Dr. Ramslin. He even talks about digging a grave in 1990 when he was out in Hayes on the census. Yet he says that he got, he dug a whole grave, but then he had to call my mom 
like to check in, like, come on, like you dig a grave and then you don't put somebody in there. So we have to go figure all of these things out now. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.